1 Samuel 17. Don't let the familiarity of the text lose us tonight. Um, as I said this morning, I didn't come uh, to, to get you connected to something new. Uh, I came to get you connected to something old. Amen. Right. Amen. And uh, it's the simple truths that save your life. Uh, but uh, there's nothing new under the sun. If anybody claims to have something new, they're probably wrong. Amen. Right. Uh, some new truth, some hidden truth that it's only uh, to a select few or a certain elect, um, <clears throat> they're probably wrong. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God's Word is for everybody. Amen. God's right. truth is for everybody tonight. And let me start my timer. Amen. Um, that didn't go towards my preaching time. Okay, that was free. And now, now it does. Amen. 1 Samuel 17 tonight. 1 Samuel 17. This is, I was praying in the hotel room earlier, and this is what the Lord put, I couldn't get away from it. I wanted to preach something different. Uh, but I was when I've learned to be obedient to the Lord and not to impress me, uh, to impress you, uh, but I want to impress the Lord. I want to be faithful Amen. and please the Lord. All right? If you came listening for something, my old pastor would say, if you came looking for something, when you come to church, you'll get something. Amen. And if you walk out wondering why you didn't get something, it's because you weren't looking for something. Right. Right. Amen. And if we would hear the Word of God as it is in truth, the Word of God be mixed with faith, it will profit. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's what we need, the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. First Samuel, I'm in Second Samuel 17. Whoops. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong chapter. Amen. I mean, that's good too, but that's not where I want to be. Amen. All right. First Samuel 17. I will make you stand tonight. All right. I will make you stand and sit for a minute. Let's, rest, let's uh, stretch our legs. <clears throat> First Samuel 17, verse 34. And the Bible says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. This is David speaking. And there came a lion and a bear and, there, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out, out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this, er, uncircumcised, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an, an helmet of brass upon his head. And also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon, upon, upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. We'll read verse 40 and we'll pray. And he took his staff in his hand, pay attention, and chose him five smooth stones wow. out of the brook. We'll go there in a second. And put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the, to the Philistine. Let's pray one, one more time. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you tonight. Yeah. I'm not able to do this, Lord. I just want to be obedient, Lord. I, I, I have other messages, Lord, you know that. But, Lord, this is what you've directed my heart. And I pray tonight that you take the Word of God, that we take our time. We preach the Word. Say what you want us to say. Say nothing else, Lord. And I pray that, God, you would be glorified, that the honor would not go to me. Uh, but, Lord, I just came to exhort Beacon Baptist Church and just to encourage them to stay by the stuff and just to, to kick off this revival meeting. And, Lord, just to encourage encourage them in the things of God and to encourage this pastor and a uh, dear friend and, and his dear precious wife and family and just have your will and way in this place. Lord, we love you because you first loved us, gave yourselves for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, but first Samuel, we, I want to walk my way and give you the context of the scripture. And then there's a verse that I desire to preach out of. All right. Can we do that? Y'all okay? All right. So we see in this text, if you'll turn back, I'm just going to walk my way through it. But in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, verse number 1 through 14, we see the enemies of God that are attacking. The enemies of God that are attacking. The Bible here mentions the Philistines. They are the enemies of the people of God. It is the nation of Israel. 1 Samuel is about how, it, it just, it's about the prophet Samuel, but also how David, or 
how Saul is instituted as the first king of the nation of Israel. He was the one who the people picked out. He was head and shoulders above all men. He was a beautiful man. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was from the smallest tribe and how God instituted him as the first monarch, as the first uh, king of Israel. And here in chapter 17 we read of a young man by the name of David. And the Bible says that in chapter 16 that he's anointed king, that, that, that he's anointed by Samuel. Saul is rejected by the, by the Lord and God chooses a man who is after God's own heart. Amen. And by the way, tonight I want to say God's still looking for a man and woman after his own heart. Yes. Amen. That's going to be a person of the word, but that's another message. But here in this text here, we see the enemies of God that are attacking the Philistines. You see them continually over and over and over again in war with Israel. And that's a picture of the flesh. That's a picture of how we're always going to battle the flesh and how we're going to have to beat down the flesh. We're going to have to crucify the flesh as believers if we're going to win the war. Amen. And so here in this text here, I'll just read the verses. The Bible says, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belonged to Judah. And by the way, let me just say this. If I mispronounce words, I'll let the pastor fix them after service, okay? Which belonged to Judah and pitched between Shoko and Ezekiah in uh, Ephes Damin. I messed that up. It's all right. And by verse 2, uh, yeah, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood, pay attention, and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me, and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that, I, that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let me pause right here and say that there are many voices in this day. Right. There are many voices today that seem to be against the people of God. I understand that, uh, that contextually this is talking about the nation of Israel, but by way of application, there are many enemies that are set up today that are, that are against the church. Amen. But we don't need to be concerned with the voices. Amen. We don't need to be concerned with the enemies. We need to be concerned with, with if God be for us, will you, uh, who can be against us? Uh, my old pastor, he was saying, forgive me, I, it's, I still can't forget all the things he said. But he said, with God, you're always in the majority. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? And we see that the enemies of God that are attacking, verse 1 through 14, but we see in verse 15 through 22, we see the explicit command of Jesse to attend. Verse 15. David's father, Jesse, commands his son to go down the battle. Let's read the verses. But <clears throat> Verse 15, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and present himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an epah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how they, thy brethren, pay attention, how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Now, I... I I'm getting ahead of myself, and this ain't necessarily what I want to preach, but David is a wonderful picture of Christ. Right, amen. I'll do a disservice to the Scriptures and not say that I see Christ in this text. The Bible says that he receives a command from his father 
excuse me, to go down and check on his brethren. Amen? Right. That reminds me of Joseph. How Joseph in Genesis 37, he was commanded of the Father to go down and check on his twelve brethren. Amen. That's a picture of how Jesus Christ went down to the Jews. Amen. And he didn't come down just to check on them. He came to redeem them. Amen. But the Jews rejected him, right. as the pastor said earlier, talking about Brother Freed. But so Jesse commands his son to go down and to see his brother. Let's keep reading. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. <clears throat> the Bible uh, goes somewhere in this text. <laughs> uh, I will eventually go somewhere, but that's besides the point. <laughs> and just, hey, just throwing that out there. Verse 18, and uh, let's see, verse 19. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper. That's another message. And took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in a army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran to the army and came and saluted his brethren. So we see the enemies of God that are attacking. We see the explicit command of Jesse to attend. But notice this. We see, thirdly, the excitement of David that was angering. The Bible says, verse 23, And he, about David, talked with them. Behold, there came up the, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. Hope you don't mind the word of God tonight. That's what we came to preach. Amen. And spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel has he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king, will enrich him with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and taken away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen. I want to say today that the enemies of God, they may come against us, but they're not really fighting us. Right. And then they're, they're fighting our Lord. They're fighting our Savior. They're fighting against Jesus Christ. It reminds me over there in Psalm chapter 2. How, or Psalm, it, it's Psalm 2. That's a pet peeve. Yeah. It's not a chapter. It's a Psalm. Yeah. Psalm 2. Amen. Psalm 2 says the kings of the earth, they set themselves up against, uh, against the Lord, His anointed, and, and God laughs at them. That, that's what I always think of when I think of uh, But the text here says that, that David say, gets angry. He, he begins to get concerned. He begins to get, have righteous indignation. And in verse 27, I just want, I'm marking that so I can come back to it. But what, what, where is the righteous indignation at? That's the church. Amen. Where is our indignation? Why, why are we not angry towards the, uh, towards the enemies of God? We are to love the sinner. Sure, we're to give the gospel. Amen. Right. But what I'm saying is where, uh, where is the outrage? Where is the cry? Where the church used to have a voice. Right. The church used to stand against ungodliness. Used to stand against wickedness. But we have become to go back in our closets while the sodomites and the, and the reprobates, they go out and they, their voice is loud. But where are the men of God? And by the way, you've got a man of God who'll stand up and thunder the word of God and bring the book and preach the word. You may be thankful for that. But where is the man of God today who will stand with a backbone like a saw log, will preach the word of God and stand for the truth? And David was anger. Hey, we ought to every once in a while have an axe to grind. Sure. Huh? We better get up and be mad at sin. We better get mad at Calvinism. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, we better get mad against this contemporary movement. I love those people, and if they're, if they're ignorant, we ought to teach them. Right. Right? But I'm talking about the generation that wants to seduce our young people and wants to seduce this generation to lead them to the Antichrist. Right. Right. I'm, I'm angry against it. Yeah. Amen. I'm upset against it. Amen. Amen. And David was upset against the enemies of God. Right. Sure. And we see in verse 27, that, that was a commercial break, amen. That wasn't in my notes. <laughs> and the people answered him after this matter, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the man, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He said, Why camest thou down hither? Notice how Eliab got mad because he wasn't standing. Right. Why is it those who, get, who are the matter so those who don't do nothing? Right. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> it, was, 
it's, it's, hey, well, why is that guy doing something? You're sitting in the back. <laughs> Amen. If you ain't doing nothing, just stay in the back. Amen. Let us stand up front and do something for God. Amen. Amen. And we, we read in the text here. That was free too, by the way. Now I'm going towards my time. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, why in the middle of the verse, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those? Notice how he degrades what he's doing. Few sheep. Yep. In the wilderness. I know that pride. No, he's, he's, preaching, he's preaching to his younger brother, but he's really telling his own heart. Sure. The Bible says, I know thy pride and the anointness of thine heart, for thou art come down, thou must see the battle. See, David didn't come under his own will. He came under instructions from the Father. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. By the way, the Jews got mad at Christ. Amen. Hey, they, they, they rejected Christ. Yeah. Amen. Because he said, they said, well, he set himself up. No, he was the anointed of God the Father. He was sent to redeem Israel. I mean, I got, I got, I got to get, I'm getting somewhere. I'm trying to get somewhere. Y'all leave me alone. Verse 29, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And there is a cause tonight. Yes, sir. We have something and someone worth fighting for tonight. Right. Amen. Amen. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible says, verse 30, Talking about the excitement of David that was angry. And he turned from him toward another and spake out to the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. We see the excitement of David that's angry. Fourthly, we see the execution of David, that, of, of Goliath, sorry, that was amazing. I'm not going to read all those verses, but David ends up killing the giant. Amen. Hey, man, that giant's a picture of the Antichrist. Huh? I'm glad there's come a day where the Antichrist after the rapture is revealed. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. And he'll rule and reign in time of Jacob's trouble. It's Israel, the tribulations for Israel. Right. At the end of the seven year tribulation, Jesus Christ will come and rule and reign and set up his kingdom. Yeah. And he'll destroy the army as of the Antichrist. Yes, sir. Amen. And he'll cast the Antichrist and the devil and the false prophet into the lake of fire, right. which is the second death. I want to say today that that's what that, that's a picture of. David coming down and winning the battle. He cut off Amen. Goliath's head. Yeah. And notice, we see fifthly, the exaltation of David that was ad advantageous. After he won the battle, he was exalted. <laughs> Amen. That's a picture of Calvary. That's a picture of how Lord Jesus Christ, he won the battle. He beat the devil on the cross. Amen. Amen. He, in fact, Colossians says he made a show of them openly. Yes, sir. And so we read in this text that after the humiliation of Christ, we see the exaltation of Christ. You read about that in Philippians chapter 2. But in verse 51 to verse 58, David is exalted to basically being the right hand of Saul. Jesus Christ is the right hand of the Father. Right. Amen. I said all that to say I've been preaching for 17 minutes and 30 seconds. Aren't you glad I know that? <laughs> Amen. But here in this text, I want us to focus on something. What well, the Lord has burdened my heart. We see the example of the church that is applied. The example of the church that is applied. Look at verse 40 in 1 Samuel 17. Y'all doing okay? Yes, sir. All right. 1 Samuel 17, verse number 40. Pay attention as David is speaking to Saul, and he, he cannot use his armor. He cannot use his weapon. And in verse 40, he says, David goes, and he took his staff in his hand, his shepherd's staff, Notice, and chose them five smooth stones, notice, out of the brook. Out of the brook. Right. Uh, a, a brook is a small natural stream of water or a current flowing from a spring or fountain less than a river. Uh, what we're saying is this, this, this brook is a little body. It's a little portion of water. Okay, I'm going somewhere. Water in the Bible is oftentimes associated with being a picture of the Word of God. Right. Ephesians 5.26. I'm going to read the verse. I believe that one could say that the brook here in this historical account of David and Goliath, they can be a picture of the church of Jesus Christ. And I believe here, I believe that there's, there, there's many, uh, there's many, uh, there's one interpretation of a text, but there's many applications. I'm going to preach an application tonight. All right? But here in this text, I see the blessing of the brook. Amen. The blessing of the brook. What are you saying, preacher? I believe there's some things we can learn about the church out of this brook. Right. Amen. Amen. 
And we see, firstly, about this brook, look at verse 40, just in the aspect of what's going on, we see the place of the brook. The place of the brook. This brook is in the midst. Oh, glory, I'm about to throw my voice out. It's in the midst of a battle. Right. David went down to the brook yep. when there was a battle. Glory to God. Right. There was a battle raging. Hey, Amen. Right. Throw my water, sweetie. Before I throw my voice out. Thank you, sweetie. Hey, Amen. I know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm not just talking about heaven. I'm talking about in this text. Right? <laughs> I'm talking about the place. The place of the brook. It was in the midst of a battle. Yes, sir. Hey, we're in a battle, friends. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. This, 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 is a, this is a playground. Right. Amen. Right. This is, this is real. Amen. What we're doing tonight is eternal. I got to right. calm down a little bit. <clears throat> Throw my voice out. We're, we're, this is eternal. Yes, sir. We got a generation playing around right. in church. Right. Making a church about you, making a church about personality, right. making a church about everything else but Christ. Right. I refuse to go to church where Jesus Christ isn't present, right. where Amen. Jesus Christ isn't exalted. Right. Amen. This is not about saying Kaminsky. My prayer today has not been able. I didn't want to come in here and preach a little three-point outline and, and, and move on down the road and sign Bibles. Or no, I don't want to be just an itinerant preacher. I want to be someone who wants to be used of God and to make a difference in this generation. Amen. Not to build a name, but to lift up Christ, the name above all names. Amen. Amen. And this brook was in the place of a battle. Right. Amen. Right. It was in the midst of a battle. Right. I want to say that I'm thankful for the church. Amen. Amen. There's many men who want to take church off their side. They're, they're, uh, they want to take Baptists off their side. But we're going to keep Baptists on our Amen. side. Amen. Amen. Uh, Beacon Baptists and Amen. Resurrection Baptists and, and uh, uh, all the other Baptists. Amen. Amen. I, I was going to start naming, but I'll miss some. And anyway. <laughs> but this, this, this brook was in the midst of a battle. Right. And th th this, this exact place was called the Valley of Eli, verse 2. Yes, sir. Eli means an oak or strength. Mm -hmm. So the valley of an oak. Right. An oak is a tree. Right. Summer it dried up but had water in the brook. Listen, the brook was located in and associated with the Valley of an Oak. Right, amen. That's a picture of Calvary. Yes, sir. Amen. Hey, that brook was there near Calvary. I want to say today, hey, we're here because of Jesus. Right. We're here because of Calvary. We're here because of the gospel. We're here. I'm here. You're here because Jesus Christ, who became, who God wrote himself in the likeness of sinful flesh. He, he, he took upon himself the form of a servant. He humbled himself, was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. He got up on the cross, became our sin. He who knew no sin became our sin. He fulfilled the, the demands of a thrice holy God, how he finished the work of salvation. He secured our salvation. You've been teaching on eternal security, how we believe in a finished salvation, and how Jesus Christ, now seated at the right hand throne of God, and gave us the church Amen. with Jesus' body. Right. Amen. I'm glad I'm not just part of a physical member right. of Resurrection Baptist Church. Yeah. Well, I'm more of the, the, the total spiritual, don't be afraid of it, universal term, universal church of Christ. Amen. Excuse me, not the Catholic church. Right, amen. Right. Don't be afraid of that word universal. I'm just saying the whole body of Christ has a whole spirit. Amen. We've been baptized by one spirit in the right. church, amen. in the body of Christ. Right, amen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. As a result of the tree of Calvary, the church... The church was birthed. Yes, sir. I find that this brook here is in the midst of a battle. It was still there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This church, hey, the brook, the, the bears of battle raging. raging. Huh? The, the, the armies of the Philistines were raging, but the brook was still there. Right. Amen. Hey, I'm glad today that the church is still here. Praise the Lord. Hey, they've been trying to wipe us out for 2,000 years, but they can't. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, they've been setting themselves up against church, but they won't win. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're a winner. We won. When Jesus Christ got out of the grave, we won. Right. Amen. Amen. Muhammad, he lost. Right. Buddha, he lost. Right. Amen. Confucius, he lost. Yep. But we win. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this, they were in the midst of the battle, but the, 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 the brook 
was still there. Right, amen. I'm glad in the midst of battles of life, we can be localized and find strength by the waters of the word yes, sir. at the local church. Amen. I encourage your friend to get ahead of myself. Stay by the brook. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Stay by the church. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people leaving the church. Yes, sir. Right. They're being seduced. Sure. Yeah. Huh? Being drawn away. Listen, huh? You better be careful what preacher you listen to. You better make sure, first of all, what does he say about the gospel? Right. Huh? Just because God's mentioning something doesn't mean he's on something. Right. Amen. Huh? We better be real careful. Sure. I go more. But we notice the place, excuse me, of the brook. Yes. It was in the midst of a battle. I have other verses I could tell, but we're going to move on. We see not only the placement of the brook, but secondly, we see the picking by the brook. The picking by the brook. Look at verse 40 of 1 Samuel 17. The Bible says, and he took his staff in his hand, here it is, and chose him five smooth stones. The brook was there in order for David to pick what he needed to fulfill a purpose. Sure. God chooses men to be used for the glory of God. Notice, when David picked these stones out of the brook, they automatically, by default, got closer to David. Right. Amen. That a call to service is a call to be closer to the Savior. Yes, sir. By the way, we've all been called to be closer to the Savior. Amen. If you're saved tonight, amen. amen. They weren't leaving that bag. They were in there. Amen. Sure. I believe they stayed in there. Amen. But the whole, <laughs> they were secure. Amen. Talking about ter eternal security. Yes, I've been following y'all's YouTube page. Amen. <laughs> I've been doing a great job by that person. But I ask this question: Can God pick us? Can God pick us? This is the verse that came to my mind. Talking about the picking by the brook. Acts chapter 13. These are the verses I've, I've told Shannon uh, early on when we first started talking. These are the verses the Lord gave me uh, back in 2018 before Preacher Wampler asked me to be the missions director at our church. And uh, I desired to do more for the Lord at church and uh, try to be faithful. And there, shortly thereafter, I was praying at the house. The Lord gave me these verses. And then Preacher Wampler there shortly after asked me to be missions director. I've been doing that for five years just to try to be faithful. And here in the text of Acts 13, here's how God picks out of the brook, which is a picture of the church. Now they were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and, and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Notice this, talking about the picking, as they ministered to the Lord. Amen. As they ministered sure. to the Lord. And fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and, Saul, uh, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. That's also a type of ordination. They're being sent out sure. of a local church. But what, 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 what I want to apply, I'm talking about the picking by the brook. Saul and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas were never picked until they were first busy. Busy. Busy for the Lord. If you're going to be used of God, you better learn to get busy. Right. You better learn how to do your part. Amen. There are things, uh, about the Resurrection Baptist Church, Resurrection Baptist Church too, but Beacon Baptist Church, that everyone in here has a talent. Sure. Everyone in here has something that they can do. The question is, are you doing it? And by the way, there was only five smooth stones that got picked. Mm -hmm. Let's not get mad at those that get picked. Right. Amen. What are you going to do if God don't pick you? You're still going to stay faithful? That's good. Huh? Yeah. That's right. Stay by the brook. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe this is too honest. Can I to be honest? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I know how to be. So. <laughs> being, 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 this is coming my, being, being, I'm 29 years old. Two days older than y'all's pastor. I tell him to respect his elders. <laughs> two days. Whole two days. 48 hours. And I appreciate how faithful he's been. Amen. Appreciate an example he's been to me as a friend. He stood by me by the hardest time in my life at 22 years old. Messed up my life. Never thought God would use me again. And he was a help to me. And I appreciate that. 
I'm standing here before you not in part due to Pastor Josh Lawson. And I'm in his corner. And you better not tell me that you're against him, because I'll be against you. <laughs> Amen. 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 Good. Amen. Yeah. I'm in his corner. I'm in Tory's corner. Yeah. I don't mean I'm not being disrespectful by saying the first names. But I'm here to tell you today, I've had to watch God pick men out of Resurrection Baptist Church and send them out. I've had to make a decision. Uh, am I gonna, if God don't pick me, what am I going to do? I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to stay by the brook. God ain't sent me out yet. God gave me a lovely bride. Amen. And his time and he'll send me out. I'm not trying to make it about me. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the picking by the brook. How God institutes things. You're going to have to stay at the brook. Right. Amen. And there's a purpose. I'm, I'm getting to it. But I've had to watch people. God pick Brother Josh Lawson. God pick Brother Austin Wagner. God pick Brother Jay Keller. God pick Brother Drew Wannan. I can name other preachers in the church. God pick Brother Jeff Johnson. God pick Brother Joey Wampler. Take him off the fundamental. Right? I've watched God pick men. But you've got to stay by the brook. Sure. If God don't pick you, it's for a purpose. Right. Y'all doing okay? And in this text, we see the picking by the brook. But lastly, we see the purpose of the brook. The purpose. It was to prepare those men, stones, to be sent out to defeat the, brook, the enemy. Talking about the blessing of the brook. This brook is a picture of the church. The, these stones, it, it is common knowledge that water over time by way of erosion can affect rocks in many ways. If water is a picture of the, of the Word of God and the brook is a picture of the church, then what a difference by way of application that preaching can do in one's life. Sure. You know, in order to be used of God, there's like, i got a couple of things here in this text. And this isn't all the way why, how I always preach, but I believe we can find it in the text. But that what, It's, the, it's the, the power of preaching, what it does in our life. What the Word of God adds sure. to our lives. Again, I have to say it because it's been such an influence. But for the past seven years in my life, I had Brother Joey Wonker as my pastor. And I can name message after message after message after message after message. Seven years worth of preaching. And now Brother Austin Wagner, my pastor, and he's doing a wonderful job. I hope he don't watch this so his head don't get blown up. <laughs> no, no, he needs to be encouraged. Pastor needs to be encouraged. He's doing a phenomenal job. And God has had me and my wife now uh, to us to be servants in Resurrection Baptist Church. We're going to be servants. We're not there to make a name. We're there. I, I told him, I sat, we sat him down, uh, we and him, we sat down. I got back from Africa. I found out that preacher one was leaving. And next, on that Saturday, was on Friday, on Saturday, me and him went down to church and had, we went down to church and prayed and we went and had lunch at Zaxby's. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That kid died on that, on that road. <laughs> and I told him, I said, as I did for Joey, I'll do for you. Huh? As I served Joey Wamper, I'll serve you. I'm not saying that to exalt me. I'm talking about playing by talking about the purpose of the brook. I'm trying to encourage the church to stay by the brook, to stay by the stuff, to stay in church. Amen. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. Notice there's some things in this text. The brook made these stones smooth. Right. You're right. Smooth. It got the rough edges rubbed the, right. down by the running of constant water. <laughs> you remember when you first walked into church? You remember when you first came to Beacon? Or maybe you got saved, you came to church, you got saved, but you didn't, you weren't all shiny and nice and all put together and wear a suit and tie wear. You remember when you first came? Till now? Huh? How God has knocked off the, the rough edges in your life. I remember when I came to Resurrection Baptist Church, I had been saved at 15. They're saying that was a mon I can't tell you, a monumental shift that happened in my life. And God began to cut off, knock off rough edges. I still got a few tonight. You, you hang around me a few, uh, a little bit, you'll, you'll, you'll see them. But I'm thankful today that the purpose of the brook is to smooth out some things in our life. Yes, and many people, they won't stay in long enough to get smoothed out. You're right. You're right. Amen. Right. 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 
Amen. There ain't one moment going to the next. Right. That's why it's important to, to come to revival meeting. Amen. I'm not preaching to those that ain't here. I'm preaching to you. Right. Yeah. I'm preaching to y'all. Every night, unless you got to work, be here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The, the, the table is spread right. for you. So be here. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Good. The, the, and the purpose of it is to smooth out your life. Sure. Amen. Yeah. Talk about the purpose of the brook. Talk about the church. What the church does. What preaching does. The, the smooth, it, it makes these stones smooth. It makes these stones smaller. To fit right. into the back. Some of us are too big for our own britches. Right. I ain't talking physically. Y'all leave me alone. I'm talking, I'm talking in our heads and our minds. Sure. We're too haughty. The Bible talks about that a novice, a, that, a, that a, a deacon and then a pastor is not to be a novice. Let's lift it up in pride, being found in combination of the devil. The church is a place for, for young men and for all ages, for people to serve. Sure. And to be servants, to do their part of the law. In the book of Nehemiah, every man did what was next unto them. It's not your job, the pastor. There's only one pastor of Beacon Baptist Church. That's Pastor Josh Lawson. I was going to say Sister Tori Lawson and then Brother Josh, but anyway, just got to get the right order. Amen. But I'm just here to tell you today, well, we can't all be the head. You can't all have preeminence, but you can serve. Amen. Amen. You can't go soul winning. I, I don't want to miss out all the ministry, but all the ministries that you have provided. And by the way, I don't believe this with missions. So I believe there's a call. But I believe in local church, if you see a need, fill it. Right. Amen. Don't complain about something if you ain't going to do it. Amen. Amen. But the, the, the Bible, uh, that the water it causes these stones to be smaller, to fit into the bag. They were selected. The water it makes the water it makes them selectable, or selected, usable, and in place where David could pick them. Notice how many people, because they didn't stay by the brook, weren't available to be picked by the Lord Jesus Christ. For the glory of God. I, I, I've been saved since I was 15 years old, but I'm trusting Jesus today. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm resting in Him today. I don't have to look back at a day. I don't have to, my, now I can finally say this. Our, our old pastor would say this. I don't have to, him, our preacher would say, I don't have to look back at this day and know that I married my wife to know that I'm with my wife. I don't have to look back to September 17th, uh, 2022. <laughs> 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 but I got in trouble. <laughs> Too early for you. September 27th. September 17th. Sometimes my, my hamster runs off the wheel. I think my hamster just had a heart attack. September 17th, 2022. No, I married my wife. She's right there. Praise the Lord. And I don't have to look back to that day and say, I got to say, I'm, I've been trying to walk with Christ today. But here in this text here, it says that they were selected. And I, I've gone to church with a lot of people. I can start naming people that I've seen walk through the doors of Resurrection Baptist Church. I can start naming the, door, the, name of the people who walk through Gateway Baptist Church. I, that's where I attended church as a youth. I can go through people who just didn't stay by the brook. By the way, don't get distracted by those people. Let me say this. We're not to, I, I don't chase people. I let the Holy Ghost tr chase people. I want to say we need to pray for those people. And by the way, they may leave, but where are they coming back to? Huh? But they were selected. How many people they weren't they weren't available? They weren't they weren't they didn't stay by the brook, they weren't usable. But lastly, these rocks they were slain. That, that's that's bad vernacular, good preaching. <laughs> Amen. These rocks they were slain. That's alliteration. Amen. Used to defeat a giant. Sure. I want to say to, today to the world, the flesh, and the devil, they're all defeated. Right. Jesus Christ won the battle. And Christ wants to use us and send you. And send, it may not be to be a missionary out in Thailand. Just throw that out there. May not be, we may not go across the world, but you can go across the street. Sure. You can go to the grocery store. Mama can win her children. That's the most important mission field. But you have an influence on somebody and all that is associated with staying by the brook, the blessing of the brook. 
I want to say there's a blessing being in church. Sure. Amen. 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 I enjoy being. Before I got saved, I hated church. <laughs> Just being honest. Before I got again, being honest, I, I, I hated church. I used to read books when the preacher was preaching. And I'd say, how long is this going to be? Some of y'all are probably wondering that tonight. How long, much longer is he going to be? <laughs> I'm just picking. But when I got saved, salvation will fix some things. Knowing Jesus will fix some things. When I got saved, God changed my desires and he changed my direction. I'm here tonight because of the brook. I'm here tonight because of the church. And 20 years from now, I'll be here because of the church, because of Christ. Amen. What about you? There's a blessing of being by the brook. There's a blessing in remaining in the church. I'm going to ask you this. Do you remember your life before the brook? Is there a B.C.? I'm not talking about before COVID. <laughs> I'm talking about before the church, before Christ. <laughs> Amen. But there's a blessing in the brook. And this brook... It was for a purpose. I close with this. I'm thankful for the house of God. Sure. And the pictures of it all through the Word of God. May we continue to search the Scriptures and find the many types of the Old Testament and New Testament, uh, types in the Old Testament of New Testament truths. We see the blessing of the brook. Amen.